Thanks for watching this review of the Gaja Brera Super Automated Bean to Cup Coffee Machine. I've decided to do this review and my first review because anytime I buy anything, I want to get the best product I can possibly buy rather than having to figure it out later and buy a new one or chuck it out. Um, and I see a lot of reviews. So for this machine, personally, I went through a few reviews and I did a lot of research online. Um, and aside one particular YouTube channel, people have bought these machines but don't necessarily know a lot about coffee, which is fine, but I'm really, really into coffee. So this review will walk you through this machine, my thoughts on it, and some just quick tips and hints on how to get the best from your coffee. Starting with the coffee itself, beans are important. You always want the freshest beans you can buy, ideally that have been roasted within the month, but that's up for debate and that's up for argument. Um, but get the freshest roast you can buy. Um, and then go through a different few brands and see what you like, see, get a taste for different companies and find what you settled on. I personally change um, each and every time just to try new things, but always ones that are freshly roasted. At the moment I've got bulletproof beans in, um, which tend to pour really, really nice coffee and I actually have a lot of bulletproof coffee here myself, so I like the idea of that. The machine itself has uh, an integrated grinder, which was important for me because I wanted to save space on my worktop. Um, you always want to grind down the bean fresh, so pre-ground can be good, and this machine allows for, for pre-ground in that slot. It's only really good if you want to have uh, a decaf, say, on a rare occasion, or a friend or something comes over and they want a decaf, or if you're into supplements and stuff, there is pre-ground coffees now out there with um, added, added extras that give you like a nootropic effect or a flavoured effect. So this machine can cater for that as well. Personally though, I am sticking to the whole bean. Now, this is a coarseness dial, which is relevant, um, and most people tend to overlook this. This is really important for the type of coffee that you're brewing. A general and simple rule of thumb is, the longer you're pouring it for, the coarser you want the grind. For a shorter and intense pour, like an espresso, you want a fine grind. For a longer Americano type coffee, you want a coarse grind. Now I'm going to demonstrate a, an espresso in this video, so it's on the fine grind. This holds, I'd say about 10, I'm roughly guessing, 10 portions. Um, in this top bit and then you just top it up when you want right this also is a nice tight air seal so I don't have to worry about them beans going stale at the top now the coffee machine allows different options for strength so as you can see the free bean option there is your maximum strength you've got pre-ground you've got light medium and strong I'm going to go for a strong and all that does is determine how long the machine grinds the coffee for so how much coffee actually gets ground um, it does nothing else but that it gives you two options these come already preset uh, this is an espresso this is a, a longer pour so like a black coffee so this is what you would want to use the fine grind with and that's what you'd want to use for uh, just a standard black coffee or uh, a longer pour you can preset these to your own preference by holding onto the button, waiting for the logo to flash, and then pressing the button again to finalize the setting when you want it to stop pouring. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that now. This is set up to my preferences, and it's good that it gives you the option to do that. As you can see, the steam one there, I've actually removed the nozzle that comes with it because the nozzle is for um, automation basically so it, it allows an air intake which tends to froth the coffee up too much it's good for the average consumer who doesn't really know how to steam or froth the milk up to the way they like it so it just it gives you them a universal effect of you know like more wiggle room to go wrong basically but this froths it up far too much for me so I've just removed it there is nozzles you can get to make uh, silkier type milks like um, lattes or flat whites or even just adding a bit to an espresso for like a cortado 
um, but I haven't bought it. So I've just standard ripped that off and I'm using that and it works fine. Uh, the options itself, obviously steam on the left, just plain old hot water on the right, that will also come out the steam wand, which is a good feature if you're just using it for a cup of tea. Uh, it allows for an average size mug. If you're having tall latte glasses, it won't work. Um, and I, prefer, I personally think they're quite gimmicky anyway, tall latte glasses. I am going to pour an espresso. It's important when you're, whatever cup or mug or espresso glass you're using, that you pre-warm it. Just add some hot water. That way, when the coffee does get extracted and it lands into the cup, it doesn't ruin the flavour or the intensity of the shot. And it also doesn't lose temperature too quickly. So I'm going to shut up now and just press it and you can watch the whole thing as it cycles through one shot of espresso at full strength. That is one freshly poured espresso. What you want to aim for when you're pouring espresso and how to tell if it's a good one is by the color of it. So, however well this camera picks it up, I'm not too sure. But that's a good crema at the top, so a good thickness of cream, sort of like a, a mini Guinness um, and dark and black within the cup. Obviously that will fluctuate depending on what beans you got. I personally have bulletproof beans at the moment um, which makes it for a really nice pour. Uh, with this machine and for espresso based drinks you can also froth the milk. I'm not going to do that for now but tips to use, uh, tips I can give you to use is the pitcher that you're using wants to be kept in the chiller or kept in the freezer. The colder you can have it normally the better. It tends to um, help aid the frothing process when you're making your milk based drink. Um, this espresso can be kept up on a cup warmer tray but to be honest with you these things never really do anything but get slightly warm so if you're expecting it to warm up your cup don't expect it to just pour some hot water or boiling water into the cup pre well, before you pour your coffee. Um, I'm only using filtered water or bottled water in this machine. You can add a filter to this machine, which is important. It's important the quality of water that goes through your machine. Not just so much for taste-wise, because you'd have to be a real connoisseur to notice, but it's more for the maintenance of the machine itself. The same way when you use a kettle, when you're using washing machines, Anything that obviously uses water to function, depending on where you are in the world, I know around here it isn't too bad, um, the water hardness and obviously the heavy metals and particles that come throughout the water, not just for your health wise, but for the maintenance of your appliances, you want the best quality water you can get. So either use pre-filtered water, you can have a, a water filter added into this tray here which is also quite convenient it comes out the front so you don't really have to move it to change these things around you can add a water water filter there but personally i only use bottled water in this um, for health reasons i only go for evian water not like you searching a review on this machine really care this is where the pre-grounds go Anytime you open one of these slots at the front, so maybe if they're not shut properly, as you can see on the indicator screen there, it will let you know what's going on. It will let you know when it needs cleaning, when it needs changing, uh, when beans are empty, what mode and setting you have it on, etc. That is just really easy. You probably can't see in there, but you just empty that out into the bin, slam it in there, 
and instantaneously it's uh, back to working function. Drip tray has a nice red indicator at the bottom there that will tell you and float to the top um, to change this, to drain this, wash it out and put it back. Um, otherwise you end up with an overflow and obviously you don't want that. The coffee machine itself looks quite nice I think. Um, stainless steel, can't really go wrong. It met all the functions that I wanted it to meet with the ceramic grinder, the flexibility of the steaming wand, um, the the actual brand itself and the options it gave me and obviously the pre-ground, the flexibility was all well reviewed and well respected online which essentially is what made me go for it um, and it seems to be doing a job so far and the reason I've gone for this, I've gone through all different types of coffee brews but I've gone for this because at the push of a button I can have the preference of coffee I want unless you're buying a coffee machine, a manual coffee machine that's worth thousands, anything you get domestically isn't really going to maximise the quality of the coffee anyway and unless you're a really really high highly experienced trained barista and you're just messing around at home then it's not worth buying a machine that's worth thousands of pounds this I paid 380 for in English pounds sterling um, but it retails around 400 pounds which is probably about 450 dollars um, I'm happy with it it fits my routine as I say it gives me options for guests or for whatever preference of coffee I have, I tend to have a stronger one in the morning and maybe a lighter one midday. And I can also add milk for those that even just want a hot chocolate, add hot flakes, well, hot chocolate flakes or powder or whatever to the milk jug and just steam that and you can make hot chocolates at the same time. That's my review of the Gargibrera. I would would recommend it. I wouldn't say it's um it's you know it's a must-have. If you're if you just like coffee just for the sake of it and you have it willy-nilly, don't go spending this much money. But if you are into coffee like I am and it's integrated into your daily routine once or twice a day, uh, and you appreciate it and you appreciate quality product and high quality beans and good machines, then I'd say go for this. Uh, sort of competitors to this have their chinks in the armour so they might not have the ceramic grinder or they may have had some poor reviews and inconsistent pouring um, strength options they might not have the steam wand this ticks all the boxes for me and I would recommend it for anyone else wanting to get it that is my first review and that's my review of the Gargibrera let me know your comments, subscribe because I will be reviewing products in the future and as you can tell I'm probably, well I'm picky about what I buy.